welcome to the news show. I'm Artie Sequera. This week's edition is brought to you by corn. Nutritionally useless, but a day or so later, doesn't it bring back memories? Corn! Our top story. OPEC is blaming the US and other industrialized nations for the global economic mess and challenging them to clean it up. OPEC says it's already done its part by providing oil spills to employ cleanup crews by sparking wars across the globe that employ hundreds of thousands, and by its unwavering support for the emotion fear, the driving force behind all consumerism. P.S. You're welcome. Guerrilla soldiers seized the palace of the president of Madagascar this week in what the group called a symbolic show of force, showing, forcefully, that they have an entirely different concept of symbolic. A $1 per pack federal cigarette tax goes into effect April 1st and may prompt as many as a million smokers to quit, health experts say. That prompted many others to say that the health experts had obviously never met a smoker. The tax will be used to pay for expanding health coverage for low-income children, but only if those broke-ass kids smoke. Defense Secretary Robert Gates announced this week that the Army's stop-loss policy will be phased out by 2010. Sadly, the policy will not be abandoned by the space program, much to the chagrin of the Phoenix Mars lander robot, currently on year five of what was to be a three-month mission. Seriously, not kidding. Tony Award-winning actor and star of Time Cop Ron Silver died this week when his future self and present-day self occupied the same space, causing a temporal paradox that destroyed both versions of Silver. Jean-Claude Van Damme could not be reached for comment unless you count his screaming, NO! at the heavens. Tough guy and martial arts expert Chuck Norris has sued publisher Penguin over a book he claims unfairly exploits his famous name. The book is based on the satirical internet list of mythical facts about Norris. This only proves that Chuck Norris doesn't have a sense of humor or even laugh because his chuckle would cause another big bang. An experimental new allergy therapy developed at Duke University using small doses of peanut protein may altogether knock out peanut allergies, but only if Steve Mazzagatti is refereeing. The Space Shuttle Discovery had an extra passenger when it launched on Sunday, a small bat clinging to the external fuel tank. And since this isn't a DreamWorks animated feature, he did not end up saving up the crew from a hostile invasion by bat-like aliens. He just froze to death in the upper reaches of the atmosphere. Aww. Bob Dylan's Malibu neighbors have complained to city officials about the scent wafting from an outdoor portable toilet on his property. Officials have yet to respond, but your answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The yes, answer is blowing in the wind. in the wind. An undersea volcano has been erupting for days near Tonga, shooting smoke, steam and ash thousands of feet into the sky above the South Pacific Ocean. Scientists at the site said it posed no danger to nearby islanders. Really? It looks so harmless. And was likely the result of acid reflux following an excessive corned beef hash consumption on St. Patrick's Day. We all know what that feels like. More than a million French workers are on strike, marching in demonstrations across the country Thursday. It's the second round of protests in two months against the government's handling of the world economic crisis. Man, those French are so weak. See, America, Americans know how to protest a shoddy government. We hold signs, we file petitions, we play flash games. Oh my God, we've been shown up by the French. Come on, America. Look out iPhone, BlackBerry is leaping into the smartphone competition. The iPhone does have a strong consumer awareness rating and local consumer base, but the BlackBerry Niagara is the only phone claiming to survive a drop over its eponymous waterfall in a barrel. 
former President George W. Bush, who once called himself the decider, is writing a book about decisions. The book, scheduled for a 2010 release, was announced, but Bush has yet to decide on a title. We're not kidding about that one either. In other children's book news, Stephen Hawking is writing a children's book about the universe with his daughter Lucy Hawking. The work will be found in both the science and children's sections, while the audiobook will be found in horror. And that's the news for this week. For me and the writer, Brendan McNamara, have a great week!